today I've got a bug fix and feature update for the ROM X. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Today's video is an update to my ROM X review. So if you haven't checked that out, go back and watch that video first so you know what we're going to be talking about today. So the ROM X has an update to the firmware that uh, does two really cool things. One, it fixes a little visual bug that was in my last video, but I'm going to actually point it out and show it to you this time. And secondly, it allows you to load a DOS 3.3 image from the ROM chip so that you can boot straight to DOS instantly without any disk load. That is really cool. Uh, since I didn't show upgrading the firmware in the last video as well, this will give us the opportunity to look that over and see what that process is like. So let's dig in and get started. So the first thing I want to show is the little glitch that the firmware update fixes. And it's basically just a visual glitch. It's not a big deal, but it is kind of annoying and uh, I'm glad they fixed it. So I'm going to hit I for info. And what you see right here is the delay is shown as weird... Uh, at symbols is like null characters or something like that. The firmware uh, update basically it fixes that little glitch so you will actually see the hexadecimal value of what the delay really is. I'm not sure what caused that exactly but it is a thing. Uh, secondly, uh, here this allows us to see the uh, version of the firmware so when I update it we can see that updated number. So let's go ahead and go through the process of actually updating the firmware. So the, what we have to do first is boot into DOS, so I'm just going to select option 1 to do that. And as you can see, I'm booting here to the ROMX system and utilities disk, which uh, you can get from theromexchange.com that uh, has the, uh, the updated firmware on this image automatically to make it easy for you. And so uh, next what we need to do is we need to load the firmware into RAM so that the, uh, the ROM X knows where to get it. So we would do that by load and then we do ROM X dot firm to 2000. That loads the updated firmware into memory. And then we need to run the ROM X disk image, which is, you know, it's this guy right here, which is basically the same as the boot menu, but allows you to rerun it from disk after you've booted up. Now we're going to hit U for upload. We select a bank to program. To upload the firmware, you select bank zero. And it says, you're about to modify ROMX firmware, confirm upload of bank zero. The upside of this is there's some checksumming or something. It will only allow you to upload or modify the ROMX firmware if what you've loaded into that slot is valid. So that's an update, a cool thing. So we hit yes to confirm upload. And then we press U again to upload. You can see it updating up there. And now it is updated. So now we turn it off. Back on and it loaded correctly. Now if I hit I and hit info, now it says it's the same firmware, but we can see that it is updated as a tiny little update because it allows us to see the actual delay for the, uh, for the boot delay for the, uh, for the ROM selected instead of at symbols. So it is working correctly now, so that's cool. Now we're gonna show really the coolest feature of this update, and that's the ability to upload a DOS image to the ROM X and then set the ROM X to boot that DOS image after it's, it's selected its actual ROM image. So we'll do that process now. So the first thing you gotta do is you've gotta upload the DOS image into the ROM. Um, there aren't a lot of details yet how to create your own DOS image if you wanted to, but they do provide you a DOS image uh, on the most updated uh, firmware update disk image. So that's a cool thing that's already there and made for you and allows you to do that. So to do that first, we got to boot to DOS so that we can get the DOS image loaded into memory. As is with everything that you load onto the ROM X, you just load it in at uh, hexadecimal location 2000. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, as you can see, we've got this DOS image sitting right here, so we need to load that into memory. Oops! Typos! You know, there we go. I'm 
going to load that into memory. That's awesome. Now we need to uh, run the disk image again, or the ROMX firmware again. Okay, we want to upload again. I'm going to upload this, this DOS image to bank F. And there's our description. U to upload. It's been programmed, and now we have it right here. Now, this image by itself doesn't do anything. What we need to do is we need to get an actual ROM image uploaded into one of these slots with the correct naming convention that has some stuff out here at the end that's similar to the, to the, uh, to the extension on here that allows us to pick a text, uh, a text uh, ROM. If we pick or if we put the right stuff in in front of that, it allows us to to tell it, okay, I want to load this DOS image from this DOS slot. So we need to do that next. And the way we do that is we booch back to DOS and get a ROM image loaded into RAM. So we're going to do that. Now that we have that loaded into memory, we need to upload that. I'm going to program this on bank A, and I need to give it a new description, and this is where we've got to do some stuffs. So basically, what we need to do here is we call this Apple Soft Basic with DOS. And then you go all the way to the right till it beeps, and then you go left six. And what you do is you put an ampersand capital D, and then the slot number uh, where the DOS image resides. In this case, it's F. So we do that. And now it wants us to upload it. We press up to upload. Bang. Now, in theory, if I pick A, it will not only boot to Applesoft Basic, it will then load DOS instantly. So let's try that out. That loaded to DOS instantly. instantly. Now, to prove that it actually is loading from the ROM image and not from my disk, I'm going to disconnect my W drive from the computer and show you it booting straight from the ROM image. Okay, so let's disconnect the W drive from the drive controller here. I'm going to boot this up, and I want to pick image A. Instantly, DOS. And this is going to give me an I.O. error because I have no disk in it. But, DOS! So that is super awesome. And now, so we can see that there really are no shenanigans here, I've connected a floppy drive to the computer. We're going to boot up with this floppy drive attached, but with no disk in it. There is no disk in this drive, and you'll see it boot to DOS, and then we'll do a catalog after that to show that it's actually cataloging the uh, this disk here. So we'll do this. We hit A to boot up. Boots to DOS instantly. Do a catalog. It's trying to read. It's failing. And it does nothing. Okay, great. So now we're going to put this disk in. Do it again. Haha! -ha, magic! That is super awesome. Booting DOS instantly from ROM in your Apple II? That is a cool trick. If you haven't looked at the ROM X yet, I really suggest you do. Go over to theromexchange.com, check it out, and if you're interested, pick one up. You're not going to regret it. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on all the cool stuff I'm doing here in the museum. You can also support me through Patreon or by snagging some merch from jcm-1.com. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos. And remember, 8 bits are all you need.